Hello everyone and welcome back to OpenShift Enterprise version 3.2 installation and configuration course and in this section we'll be talking about persistent storage in OpenShift environment. So by definition when you run your application in a container or a docker it's ephemeral and stateless. This container spins up, it does some business and goes away and whatever has been provisioned as part of this process from memory or CPU or storage is gone and it will be reclaimed by another container. So this is good for some applications. Some applications just need processing power, so you need more instances to serve your traffic or you need more instances to process your files and so on and you don't care about storing anything to the file system because you are using a database and you don't care about uh, accessing a file system. However, for some other applications, this is critical. OpenShift leverages Kubernetes persistent volume framework and this framework is based on network storage so uh, it depends on having a network storage available in your cluster and then administrator starts adding this persistent storage to the cluster and uh, partitioning it between projects and so on. So OpenShift depends on this framework and currently the supported volume plugins are as you see here. The only common thing between them is that all of them are network based storage. So what is the process of using these persistent volumes in uh, an OpenShift environment? You start by having network volume available to your cluster accessible by all of your masters and nodes and then cluster administrator starts adding and provisioning part of this network volume to the cluster. Administrator usually creates uh, some sort of YAML file. So once you have this persistent volume object available to your cluster, uh, developers or project owners start claiming portions of these volumes to their projects. So a developer can create persistent volume claim this is also some sort of yaml file with a specific syntax and you're just booking a portion of this available volume to your project once you have this claim available to your project define some binding between the available storage in your project and how this will be provisioned actually to pods there are different ways in doing this mapping uh, if you are doing this for a single bot, so you just want to provision one bot with this configuration, you can do this through a YAML file, you create a binding and you run it, and then you will be creating only a single bot based on this configuration. If you want to uh, associate this configuration with every bot that will run for a specific deployment, then you can update the deployment configuration of this uh, application, and this is actually how we will be doing our exercise. So this is the life cycle of the persistent volume. You start by having this network volume available in your network accessible by masters and nodes. Then administrator creates a persistent volume object in the cluster, booking a portion of this network volume. And then in the project, the developer or admin creates a persistent volume claim, which will book a specific portion of this persistent volume to this project. Once you have this claim available in your project, you have to define a mapping between how this claim will be used in your bods. You can do this either by defining for a single bod, defining a binding file and run it and it will start a bod with this configuration or you can update the deployment configuration of a specific application and making this volume available to every bod that will be started as part of this deployment configuration. Once the application is done you can delete the persistent volume claim and this will release the portion that was booked for this project and this depends on the reclaim policy whether it's recycle or retain if the policy is retain the volume will remain in the cluster and it will wait for a manual scrubbing or a manual archiving before it becomes available again if the policy is recycle then the volume immediately becomes available back to the cluster and another project can claim it or claim a portion of it to start using it in another application so in our exercise, we'll be extending our environment by adding an Elastic file system uh, from Amazon Web Services and we will use this Elastic file system as our persistent storage for a test application. So here's our environment. So far, we created a virtual private cloud. We have a public subnet that hosts our three instances, one master and two nodes. We have created an Active Directory Manager to manage the Active Directory we created in the other two private subnets and we have DNS internally and DNS externally and what we'll be adding in this part is the EFS in the private subnet here. 
So for the rest of this lecture, we'll create the EFS and we'll just mount this to uh, our master and nodes just for testing to make sure that we have access to this EFS and it works as expected. In the next lecture, we'll actually have a test application that is using this network file system as its persistent storage. So for this exercise, we are using network file system, persistent volume. Definitely for uh, other exercises or for your environment, you might be using different types. But the concept is the same, syntax might be slightly different, however the concept at the end is the same. So moving to the Amazon Web Services Admin Console. Okay, on my landing page and I will be going to Elastic File System. I already have one created but I will create a new one for this demo. I will select OpenShift Demo VBC. By default, it's trying to add it to uh, multiple zones for high availability. However, I just need it in one zone and I will choose one of my private subnets. And here for the security group, I have to add a security group with NFS ports open. So I will use my OpenShift Demo security group. And I have already added the NFS port to this security group. So I will name this OpenShift Demo NFS and its general purpose. Everything's fine and create. So this will take some time for creating here. And once it's available, I already have the IP address and I can use this to create my configuration files and use them in my masters and nodes. So it's now available, so the creation has been completed and I will just go to my EC2 instances and start mounting this. So here I'm using the mount command and I just copied the IP address that was uh, displayed here. And I'm mounting the root of this EFS server to EFS mount on this host. So now I have mounted this file system into my host at slash EFS mount. And I will just create a file in EFS mount and write something in there. And then we'll do the same steps on the other node and see if I can see the file on the other node. Try something there. So we have the file under this server. I will just go to my uh, node one and I will mount this file system into node one and see if I can see this file under node one or not. So I need the public IB of node one. And I will connect to my EC2 instance. Yes. I will elevate my privileges. And then I will create a directory, same name. And I will do the mounting. And I will list EFS. And here I see my file now. So we have successfully created this uh, network file system on Amazon Cloud. And we have successfully mounted this file system into two of our EC2 nodes. So away from using this in OpenShift, this is just a general practice if you want to have uh, a network shared volume for your application or for your uh, environment. This is one way to do it. So that's it for this lecture guys. Thanks for watching and join me in the next lecture for the steps to configure our OpenShift environment to make use of this network file system and for a demo on having an application that actually utilizes persistent storage. Thank you.